this might honestly be a hard truth. Some people are not cut out to be a professional artist. If you aren't ready to go through the ups and downs of this journey, I suggest you bow out now. A big pillar of it is your network and your entrepreneurial skills. And a lot of people wanna quit their job thinking that they're gonna be sitting around painting all day. And I'm telling you right now, that's not what it is. And I think if we heard that sooner, if I think if people realize that actually when they become an artist, they're becoming a business owner, a lot more people would not want to become an artist because they don't want to run a business. And I think that we need to we need to say that clear and plain for people. What do you want your life to look like? And if it's just creating more art, you can do that with your full time job. You actually can do it more with your full time job. And I wish more people knew that they actually shouldn't be out here quitting their jobs because you actually probably don't have less time to create. And that's that's like I just want this. And this is honestly, y'all probably going to be the last conversation that I'm going to have about this. I really wasn't even going to talk about a lot of this stuff, but there is just so much on the internet that I feel like I just can't sit by. It's kind of like Cat Williams, where he was like, I just can't let the shenanigans carry on. And I'm really not, you know, trying to come at anybody, judge anybody, whatever. I just want artists to know some of these lessons because I feel like if I knew them sooner, it would have really saved me. But also times are really different right now and things are evolving. So I actually wrote notes, okay? We might not even time set, like whatever, okay? Number one, stop taking advice from the internet, y'all. It is a beautiful, magical place for us to learn so many different things. The one flaw, there's not one, there's actually many flaws with the internet, but a big flaw with the internet is that there aren't like customization features. Now you might think there are like with the algorithm, whatever, but whoever's giving you advice on the internet, they don't know you. They don't know your personal situation. They don't know what point you are in your life or your art career. They don't know your health status. They don't know so many different things. So some of the advice that people can give you can actually be completely counterintuitive for where you wanna go. Here's the thing about the internet. I think a lot of us have been seeing the shifts and the changes that have been taking place. I've been seeing different talks about, um, you know, big YouTubers quitting, uh, you know, influencers, like brand deals are drying up. Like we are really witnessing a shift right now. And I think for artists who wanted to start using some of the tools of social media to share their work, now they, like you might feel like, well, damn, like, is it is it like too late or whatever? Like, ooh, is it is it starting to get like saturated? You know, there's so many people sharing now on TikTok, Instagram, whatever. Here's the thing about that. First of all, I feel like it was gonna be a contradiction for me to be like giving advice on the internet when like literally my first number one advice is to stop taking advice from people on the internet. So a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna sort of put the context in this is from my personal experience, what I need people to do, okay? What I need you to do is to put this through your own lens, put this through your own filter, analyze things within your own life to see if this feels right for you. If it does not, please do not apply this to your life. <laughs> Here's another thing, like if you don't know this, okay, Jim and I, two sides, she be ran, she be, she be all over the place, okay? But a lot of us um, are like chronically online, right? And so like you seeing all these different things, you seeing so many people's different like opinion and feedback and shout, and shout out, shout out to my husband, Andy, okay? If you follow my main channel, that's where I share like pretty much like my sort of life at, as an artist, diary of an artist. Um, so I'm super grateful to have Andy in my life. And I think it's just so important to have supportive people in your real life. I'm gonna tell you as like a content creator that like some of the comments you receive can genuinely bring you to tears, can genuinely move you so much. And it's so beautiful. Um, but the other thing that I've, I've even been on my own journey of trying to balance that where it's like, okay, wow, like these comments are so beautiful. I still have like a small channel. Like we have this beautiful community. Like, okay, what happens to a creator's mental health when those comments start to shift? When your audience starts to shift? When, when like maybe you don't become, when you aren't as like relatable anymore? Like just like some of, some of the things that we've been seeing online, right? And I think that's why the real in like the IRL, the in real life 
community, audience, fans, friends, and family members will always be supreme over a sort of online experience. And like, I'm gonna be real. And it's like, I clench a little bit in saying that because I've met so many wonderful people online. But at the same time, if I'm not posting anymore, or if I'm not sharing anymore, those are rare people that like have my number and text me in real life and like check on me you know what I mean and so it's like the people who really checking on you are your real people in real life and I think sort of the pandemic put us online a lot and I know for me part like let me let me speak for me because a lot of this is a lot of this have been experiences that I have learned through just experiences right in time so one of the issues that I was dealing with was um I had a really successful uh art business out here in Seattle it's just it's just been great. I'm super grateful for it as the pandemic took place. So pretty much I was doing like art festivals, shows, pop up events, um, live painting events, painting murals, speaking, consulting, like just a whole lot of different things in person. And so when the pandemic happened, like a lot of us, we all shifted online. So I started my YouTube channel. Is that when I started my Patreon? I think, yeah, I started my Patreon around 2020. So there were a lot of things that I implemented to get another stream of income for things online and so like it was great right so like 2020 2021 where there was nothing <laughs> it was few things that were great around that time but something that was great was that I was still able I'm I'm the queen of the pivot okay so like the power of the pivot I feel like is huge and so realizing that change is inevitable and that's really a part of life I'm actually whatever that's a side note like whatever I was gonna talk about something else but anywho change is inevitable and so being able to pivot i think has definitely been one of my superpowers and so i'm seeing another pivot take place in real life and like i want to share this because i feel like we're receiving a lot of poor advice from the internet and i'm really trying to figure out like how how real we going how real we gonna go with this um I think it's important to be transparent about a lot of things that's taking place for creatives as the sort of blend between traditional artists, digital artists and content creators have been bleeding a little bit more. If you, if somebody if if their dominant source of um, content or income is providing advice to other artists, that's something to consider. I think I'm always the person to like, let people get their coin how they get to the coin, okay? I love when all of us can get to the bag. There's more than enough room for us all. But if that's not where you're trying to go, then that might not be the advice that, that you wanna take from that person. So I think it's important to realize where you wanna be and how certain things serve you. Another thing that I think can be very harmful energetically, spiritually, creatively for artists and creators is comparison. I know we hear it all the time. Comparison is the thief of all joy, whatever. Here, he like here, I mean, it's true, right? Like not whatever, but like it's genuinely true. Here is the thing that I felt like really served me in regards to comparison. It's about honoring my uniqueness and really have power in that. Like, okay, I'm gonna really try to try to break this down because I feel like this has been a very important piece that I've had to unpack, especially during 2020. So to give you some context, in 2020, we all witnessed the COVID pandemic. We also um, saw the uprise of the Black Lives Matter movement. I was a part of painting the Black Lives Matter mural in Seattle in 2020. It was a huge moment for our city, for our town. Uh, it got a lot of press. It got a, it got a lot of media coverage that was bittersweet. The sweet part of it is that it really gave me a lot more exposure for my art and for my career. Um, I grew my Patreon through a lot of people who saw the advocacy work that I was doing in the community. Um, and there were like just a lot of different, like we were painting murals all over the city. There was just like a lot of good things that came from that for us to use our, for us to use our tools of art to help, you know, bring like light and like color to the city while also helping people through a very hard time of us mourning, grieving, we in like isolation. It was it, clearly, it was a lot. I don't have to like bring y'all back. Like you know exactly what was going on, but just sort of like giving you context on, on that pivot 
And so some of my things, and these are some of the things that I even like unpack on, on my main channel. Some, some of my things that I'm still processing is my sort of tendency for people pleasing, sort of like uh, heavy emotions that I can deal with. It's like shame, guilt, self-doubt, fear, probably like a lot of artists, right? And so one thing that I can see that I have also been guilty of, that I had to learn throughout my years of artistry, is realizing that anything that I'm doing outside of my creative work is another job. So for me, and a lot of artists can probably relate with being like multi-passionate. I had so many different projects, businesses, products I was launching, like a lot of different things. And I think it's also, I think that's good. Like I also don't wanna shame that. I think it's good and also important for artists to have different multiple streams of income, diversify their income. But when it comes down to community leadership and when it comes down to advocacy and when it comes down to um, being a sort of community organizer, event planner, all those different things, I see a lot of artists falling into falling into those roles where then their creativity is put on the back burner, where now they're sort of doing more community activism and organizing events and doing all these different things and they haven't been able to create as much. And so from the advocacy work and the community work that they're doing, they feel good because they feel like they're serving, but at the same time, it can drain their creative well, later leading to burnout. And so one of the things that I've gotten clear on now, this is, this is for me, it's important for us to all put these things through our filter. Here's where I feel like this comes from, okay? Now this is just like a working theory that I have. A theory that I have and something that I have dealt with, a personal issue that I had was feeling like just me making art in my studio wasn't enough. Like I had to actually be out in the streets. I actually had to organize something, create something because as like spiritual beings and artists and like empaths, we can, we can see the suffering of the world and we wanna help so much and we wanna do so much. And at the same time, we might be already dealing with like self-doubt or feelings of insecurity or feelings of unworthiness where I know for me, I was feeling like, OK, me like, you know, sitting up in here, painting all this colorful shit. Like, no, like the actual real work is actually outside. And what has helped me shift my mindset is to put myself in the position of um, fans, collectors, patrons, and consumers of the art. I am so grateful that Beyonce is doing her work of being an artist and creating incredible music to lift our vibration. And so I feel like for her to dedicate her career and dedicate her time to perfecting her craft, it has inspired me in so many more ways than any sort of like community leader has and that's just like this is about to be like the realest rawest video okay <laughs> like because i think it's important for us to also be honest with ourselves and that's a that's a journey that i've been on of just being like radically honest with myself as well as radically accepting of what i want to do and where i want to be and i feel like i'm serving the world when i am showing up through community events or whatever but when i think about where i want to be 50 years from now, when I think about serving in a very sustainable way, it's about being my, being the version of myself unapologetically by showing up in my art and creativity because I know that it also inspires other artists where they can do the same thing. I think it's important to see more successful artists actually making it versus more artists telling more artists how to do art, you know? it sort of felt like we were getting into a pattern of coaches coaching coaches you know like if you if you sort of seen some of that online it it can be this like perpetual cycle where like we're all giving advice and so part of me i just didn't even want to be a part of the landscape of it but you know when you just see something and i'm just like i just couldn't help but speak on it i really want artists to see the value in their art and to see the value in them creating and showing up and also realizing that some of the advice and, and, and maybe even even if it's not like artist advice per se or like like whatever even stuff like business advice fitness advice wellness advice like whatever like just so part of this was even inspired by um 
my comments. Okay, so first of all, shout out to Chris. Chris is an incredible um, supporter of mine over there on the, on the main channel, and he's always showing love and asking great questions and really allowing, first of all, inspiring me for different talks, but also allowing me a space to share some of that. So uh, just to give y'all some context, so I've been full-time with my art about seven years, I guess maybe going on eight, pretty much since 2016. Four, four, eight, yes, eight years. Okay, at the time of recording this, today is April something, 2024. Um, but I was working as a full-time artist. Pretty much my primary medium is acrylic paints. Uh, I have a studio in Seattle. Okay, she back. Why is there a bottle in the middle of the... Oh my God. Whatever. Okay, so back to the conversation. I'm a... I talked about this on my main channel about getting another job, working for another artist, being a studio assistant for her. And so this part of the reason that I'm even talking on this subject is because I've been feeling the same way too. I was feeling tired. I was feeling creative burnout. I was feeling like, does anybody even care about my work? Like just really trying to figure out a different, a different model. Part of this to be real, cause like this is, this is the keeping it a buck podcast. Okay. This is keeping it all the way real. Um, sales did start to slow down from Instagram. I don't think I mentioned that my other source of income is from my online shop where I sell like prints of my work, candles, greeting cards, clutches, journals. Yeah, but a primary way where I was, pro where I was promoting my online shop was through Instagram. And so everybody know Instagram's organic reach has uh, suffered a major hit. And so due to that, my shop experienced that as well. Um, super grateful though, I have an email newsletter that where I have a really great <laughs> open rate and a really great conversion rate for my um, supporters and I'm super grateful for that. I think here's the point where I wanna start transitioning and telling y'all about some of the things that actually helped my business and helped me be able to be where I am and sustain myself. Uh, but I was talking about how this was inspired by Chris because he asked from me leaving my, so pretty much to give you some more context, I started working as a studio assistant for another artist. Mind you, she's in her seventies and she has so, and I learned so much from her. The crazy part is like, she don't even know how much I learned from her. Part of me was working for her was to learn, to observe, to actually see how a professional working artist is doing it. Like, I don't, I don't wanna hear from nobody out on the streets. I wanna see somebody who's doing it, you know? And I think the difficult part about getting sort of advice or input from working artists is that like working artists, like we like we not out here with a with a court, like we not out here with nothing. We just doing our work, you know? Like we ain't, we ain't, you know? And I feel like that's where you sort of get like the imbalance of information because you have a sort of influx of people sharing information who are more in the education space and they aren't really more in the working artist space who's actually like in the field per se. You know, now granted there is like a little bit of overlap or like, oh, maybe they're like doing a show here or there or whatever, but like that isn't their like main thing. And so part of me even sharing this is that I know on my journey, I wanted to hear more from working artists, but what can be difficult? Let me just tell you like, cause we hear, right? Like part of the reason that some artists don't share stuff online is cause like, yeah, we just, we just, we just busy working. Like we, we busy painting, we going to shows, we prepping for our exhibits. Like we just out here like doing the work and just like maybe vlogging some of that. But the other thing, just from like the content creator perspective, if you do put stuff, cause like YouTube is a place where people are seeking information. So those videos tend to do well when you say how I made X, thousands of dollars per month with my art or how I did, or even like business or my Shopify or my like whatever. Like people love those videos about like how people are making money. And so what happens when a video does well, the algorithm pushes that video. Now the content creator is like, oh, those videos are doing good. Let me keep sharing more advice videos and more education videos because that's getting me the clicks. That's also getting me the income, you know? Then they start to shift their energy away from their art and towards education. And so then that becomes their primary source of income. And so now they want to continue sharing more education stuff and then they don't share as much of their work or they aren't more like in the field. And let me break down what I talk about in the field and why I think the field is so important. Okay, like the streets will humble you. Okay, the streets will humble you and it's so, 
And I love it though. Like I love it. It keep the being in the streets keeps me humble. The thing about the internet is that it can gas you up. You sort of get in your own little ecosystem, you know, like your own little vacuum of fans of people who love you and like all these wonderful comments and you just like in your little cozy space of the people who laugh at all your jokes or love all your art. You could paint anything, you could do anything. There's comments people, I could watch you eat a eat a bowl of cereal. Like you could do anything. Like, but when you get out on the streets, when don't nobody know you, don't nobody, ain't nobody like whatever. Now, granted, when you are kind of new on, on YouTube, it can feel like that too. Like, don't nobody, don't nobody care. Let me put a pin on the, in that though. I want to come back to the comments about like nobody cares because I think that's very dangerous language, but we're going to come back to that. Let's stay on topic of what I'm talking about, about how important being in the field is. Now, I feel like this can really be equated for, um, first of all, my hands look giant. Just know it's for shortening, okay? <laughs> like, I'm just way back here. My hand is here. My hands are not this big. Like, what the hell? Anywho, let me, I'm, I'm a hand talker. Okay, let me put my hands down. Here, here's the thing about being in the field, okay? It makes you tough. It builds that tough, resilient skin. It makes you stronger and more impervious to, impervious? Is that the right word? <laughs> Well, pretty much where like negative stuff can't permeate you because you have you have become more resilient. Like when you out at like a, like a little local art fair or pop up and like a little six year old walks up and he's like, why is she purple? Or like, this looks weird. You know, it's like, I love that <laughs> because it's like, okay, cool. Like, right, you know, that's fine. And it's like, that's fine. Like, you know, it just, it's just like, we, it's just about the reality that the world isn't gonna always like your work, but the people who do love it, those are the people that you cultivate. And, the, and it's like, it's like, I'm not, we're not out here trying to serve anybody else, but the people who like what we create. Like we not on a, like, and I, part of the thing that I've been dealing with and like I've learned and grown over time, I'm not trying to please anybody else. If somebody doesn't like color, that's not my audience. Like if you like a sterile white room and you're like the white aesthetic, you're not my audience. Okay. And that's totally fine. And it's like, but I'm also not about to go make all white art or some like sort of like minimalistic thing to sort of appease that audience. I've just fully embraced who I am and I'm realizing that like that's not my audience, you know, and that's completely fine. And I feel like Beyonce is just like, yeah, if you don't vibe with my music, there's so much music. There's so you can you can you can go wherever wherever you want to go, you know, and I think what can be maybe I know for me, I had to be careful. I was sort of like falling into the trap. This is actually a great example. Actually, I've created a lock journey video on my main channel. Clearly, I have locks. I, I, I love my hair. I get compliments all the time on my hair. I've been growing my locks for over 12 years and I created a video on my main channel. It was a lock journey video. It did very well. OK, I have a fairly small channel of 12,000 subscribers subscribers and that video got over 40,000 views. So for my small channel, that was a very successful video. Um, I ended up unlisting that video because that wasn't where I wanted to take my channel at all. Like I literally was like, well, one, it was fun. You know, you kind of, you making stuff fun, but you also could be like, oh, this could get a lot of views, you know? But then when that video started to get a lot of views, I realized that like, those actually aren't the views that I want. Like that's actually not the community of people particularly that I want. Um, because I want people to be here more for my art journey and my creative journey. Now, mind you, I did gain a lot of, uh, I gained about maybe 2,000 subscribers from that video, and I'm grateful for the, for the people who stuck around. And so not to say like, oh, those aren't the community members that I want, but there's something about being true to yourself where it's just, it just makes everything light and love, where now you aren't comparing yourself and being like, well, why does that video ha have views? Maybe I should make that kind of video. It's like, if that's not what you want to make, like if you don't want to be making hair content, it don't matter how many views some other video was getting, I shouldn't be making hair content. Even if I do have all the locks and not and like, and I'm like, I'm like, these girls are doing like they two year lock journey. <laughs> video. Like, like what tips do you have to share? Like you, <laughs> let me know. Are you being shade? Is it was that shade? That was so not shade. That was <laughs> because clearly.
somebody who's in their two year lock journey video has a lot that they can share for somebody who hasn't started their locks yet. So it's important to realize that there's value for every stage of the journey. You know, and so, yes, that person who's sharing their six month lock journey video, two year lock journey video, 10 year lock journey, video, 12 year lock journey video, everybody's phases of their journey is valuable and beautiful and important and adds something to the world. But it's also about getting clear about like, where do I want to be, you know? Oh, I wanted to come back to something that I was saying about advocacy and artistry. And this is connected because when I was talking about being like a multi-passionate creator and like doing all these different things in the community and like want to do all these things. And sometimes we can fall into that as artists as well. We can fall into that as content creators. Like, oh, I want to I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this. Like I have I have like so many interests. I think that's wonderful. Now, when it comes down to the art, one thing that I this and this might be a weird take, but like whatever. And this isn't like just like go with me here. I think that I have a great community of people who understand nuance. So like, just go with me here with this one. By me thinking that I can do everything, it was almost like disrespectful to the people who are act, who are actually masters at that craft. You know, like it's almost like when, when you go hire a plumber or hire a contractor to try to fix something in your house and you like get the quote and you're like, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now mind you, <laughs> me and Andy recently purchased a home. So a lot, a lot of things in our home have been done DIY, but it's also, but from the shit that we've messed up in our house, it has humbled me and really taught me the value of actually getting a professional to actually do something. And so even when I'm like organizing events or trying to do some like sort of marketing thing, I realized that like, no, that is actually a full-time job. Like that is actually a profession. Like being a content creator, being an influencer, there's so many artists who's like, oh, I don't want to do social media or like, oh, it's like so much time or so much effort. It's like, yeah, I think that actually should be a moment when we can put some respect on influencers name, you know, or when we can actually realize like, no, it's, it actually is work what they doing. You know, it actually, it, it actually does take time and energy to come up with a creative concept, to come up with a creative video idea, to come up with those cool cuts and edits and transitions and when they throw in the clothes in the air and do, like doing all this, like that's actually creative work. And so I'm just learning like, so, there's so many different things that I wanted to do and like I still want to do. But what I'm also realizing is that, first of all, like, let me honor, let me humble myself and honor the, the professions in the field who've already been doing the work, who've already have put in a time and sweat and equity. And how can I maybe collaborate with them and help and help them build what they already been working towards versus me like, oh, I'm about to, I'm about to create a brand new da, 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 da. But it's somebody over here who already been building it, who could really probably use some help building what they already created, but you are an artist. And so now your gift is now you can bring color and fun and passion and like energy because a vibration is value. You know, like you, like you just coming in, like I went to an event, y'all, like this is just so dope. Um, I, w I went to this event in Seattle, you know, Seattle, like the Pacific North, but look, Oregon, shout out to Portland too. I have an event coming up in Oregon. If you ever want to know about my work or whatever, follow me on Instagram and, but definitely join a newsletter though. That's where I share like different events that I got coming up. But, um, so I was at this event. It was this like a uh, boudoir, like burlesque event. Okay. It was giving vibes. So they had go-go dancers and like, I was, you know, like you hear about go-go dancers. Like you don't really, like I had never really been to an event with a go-go dancer. She just brought the energy. I was like, I was, she was such a vibe. Like she just brought this energy of fun and play. And you know, and like events can be awkward and weird and like, you know, people not really dancing or people feel like uncomfortable. So she got this like feather tail. So she's just like coming up and like, you know, like shimmying her little tail on us, like making us laugh and like pooping our nose and just like doing fun stuff. And I was just like, oh my God. Like it's just, like she just brought so much like fun and play and like, that is valuable. And so for her being a dancer, for her being an artist and a creative, just her energy lightened the room. Like she just, she just like made the event so much, so much fun, you know? And I think sometimes as artists, we can forget how much, how much just our energy 
is a value, you know? And so for me to think like, oh, me painting this stuff, like me being in this studio isn't really adding to the world, it actually is because I get so much feedback from people who like love my work, who are collectors of my work, where like they have literally designed their entire living room off the color palette in my painting. They were like, girl, you inspired me. Like, okay, she had purple, pink, and yellow. I got purple, pink, yellow pillows. Like I literally inspired them to vibe out their whole space, you know? And there's value in that. And, and like, I want, I want artists to remember that like they are valued, like we are valuable, you know? So on, so, so let me, she about to go to home and did it, but like, I just, that's just important. I told y'all buckle up, okay? Buckle up, baby cake. Hopefully whatever you create and working on in the background is looking good, all right? Right, okay, that's beautiful, right? We can, mm, the energy is the vibrations. Two sides, Gemini, okay? So that's our beautiful ethereal side. The other side is the tactility, the finances, the breaking it down. This might be a hard truth. This might honestly be a hard truth. Some people are not cut out to be a professional artist. Like, let me, let me keep it, let me keep it a buck. Let me, let me keep it all the way a buck. If you aren't ready to go through the ups and downs of this journey, I suggest you bow out now. I think, I think we also, I think it's also important. And I think Gary Vee talks about this too. Like shout out to Gary Vee, Gary Vee. People can feel how they feel, but he be speaking a lot of truth. And some of the stuff he starts to talk about a little bit later in his career, when everybody did start going the entrepreneur route and feeling like, oh man, like I can't, I can't keep up with this. He's always talked about that he always has been an entrepreneur. The lemonade stands and the baseball cars. It's like, that is who he is at his core. And what I want us to realize and, and what, and as a working artist, as a professional artist, and, and actually working for a 70 year old, she was a 70 year old plus year old woman who has been, who has had an incredibly successful career. And I'm so grateful have had the privilege to share breath and share space with her, okay? If she, she's an incredible artist, but she's a better businesswoman. She is a supreme businesswoman and entrepreneur. And what, and the thing that taught me the most in that space was like, oh, Aramis, a lot of this ain't got nothing to do with what you putting on that canvas. Sometimes we'll wanna hear, but it is the cold, hard truth. There's been many a times that we have gone into galleries and we've gone into museums and we've seen work that doesn't resonate with us. And people say, oh, you know, I could have done it or whatever which is definitely an insult to an artist and you should never say that, but like whatever. But also at the same time, hey, maybe that's your truth and that's fine, but the key is you didn't do it, they did. They did and they also had the courage and they had the discipline and they had the tenacity to actually put it out in the world and put a price tag on it and say that this is valuable for the world to see. And they over time had people bagging them up and like it's, there's a whole lot of different things involved to it, but a big pillar of it is your network and your entrepreneurial skills. And a lot of people wanna quit their job thinking that they're gonna be sitting around painting all day and I'm telling you right now, that's not what it is. And I think if we heard that sooner, if I think if people realize that actually when they become an artist, they're becoming a business owner, a lot more people would not want to become an artist because they don't want to run a business. And I think that we need to we need to say that clear and plain for people, especially now when there can be like a lot of romanticization things going on. And like and I'm, I don't even want to say guilty. I think that's actually part of my job. OK, is to romanticize this life, like to be an artist. I feel like it's my full time job to romanticize exercise this life okay but part of that is bringing the world on a journey with me so that where they can be in that high vibration with me but it's also about business it's also about marketing I have to pay my studio rent I have to pay, pay employees I have to actually be out here like so the thing is sure like so when I talk about artists and their energy and just just them raising people's vibration is a value the business part is trying to productize an energy. It's like now we all here in this like ethereal space. Okay, how do we bring this manifestation down into a physical plane? Put it in a bottle, put a cap on it, put a price tag on it and give it to the world. That's where the other art form comes in.
You know, it's about and 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 the thing is, some people don't want to do that. Some people don't want to do it, and that's totally fine. And I think it's important for us to sit down in our journal, sit down in our meditation practice, reflect with our partner, do our dream work, go through our movement practice of yoga or dance or walking or running, whatever your process is, or showers, whatever process it is for you to brainstorm and and really process through your body. What do you want your life to look like? And and if the, and if it's just creating more art, you can do that with your full time job. You actually can do it more with your full time job. And I wish more people knew that they actually should be out here quitting their jobs because you actually probably don't have less time to create. And that's that's like I just want this. And this is honestly, y'all, probably gonna be the last conversation that I'm gonna have about this because I don't even wanna. I don't even want to be a part of the internet zeitgeist of people sharing more advice or talking more stuff. I just want to be in the field, okay? That's where I want to be at, sharing my art with my audience and, and my community and prioritizing my fans. And I think the most successful people, artists and business owners, they are customer obsessed. People can feel how they feel about Amazon, especially in Seattle, okay? <laughs> Seattle like, oh, Amazon, a big corporate, da 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 but they got that prime membership. But you can't you you can't deny that 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 one day shipping, that two hour shipping, because Amazon is customer obsessed. When you are actually satisfying the people who are funding your craft, your business, your career, whatever. Beyonce, she went independent years ago, back in what was it 07, 07 or 2011? She was like, forget you, I'm not about to play with these corporate people. I'm about to focus on my fans. And she has always been fan obsessed of creating the music that we love. That, that was her primary focus. Everybody else, all the other, you know, musicians, celebrities, hip hop people, they get caught in social media drama or beef with somebody or like whatever. At the end of the day, she's in that studio. She like, I ain't worried about all this other stuff. I'm in that studio. I'm, I'm creating music. And so for me, I want to be in the studio creating art and being out in the world and sharing it with the people. And so when you focus on your art and when you focus on your creativity and giving it to your customers, patrons, collectors, organizations, whoever you are giving your art to, those are the people who are going to be most important in your career. And that's just honestly what it is. And then the other note that I had that brings me to another note that I had about that, which is about building those relationships in real life. I've been able to weather this storm because of the city of Seattle. And I need to put respect on this city's name and respect on the people who've been supporting me A1 since day one, before the internet, before Instagram, before whatever. It's been the people at local pop-up shops, coffee shops, um, North uh, Northwest Folklife Festival, um, murals that I painted. I painted a mural, this purple thing. I painted a mural years ago and I've just been painting murals all over the city. And so you can feel like you know, we can feel like the internet is saturated. What's not saturated is your city, your town, actually going going in person with people and connecting with people in real life. And so as the internet is shifting, I was like, ooh, some of my sales have gone down from Instagram. So I've just pivoted back to like going out in the streets and, and the people out, I'm like, oh yeah, you they, they here. I don't have to worry about an algorithm or, you know, um, if the internet, if the, you know, TikTok is going to push it out or if YouTube going to push it out, it's like, oh, I'm at this event and they have traffic coming. They have people coming. So I, I can make money in that one night from the in-person thing. So I think like with the sort of pandemic, when we all shifted online and this is a, I'm definitely a person I'm speaking to myself right now, because even one of the vlogs I talk about, like, I'm like, I ain't trying to be out in no. I just want to stay in my in my PJs, girl. It's time. It's time to put some pants on. OK, uh, the pandemic is over. Uh, you ain't about to stay in your PJs all day sitting at the computer. It's time to put your pants on and it's time to get out into the real world and touch grass and talk to the real people and stop taking advice from the people on the Internet who don't know you and who and who don't know your situation and don't know that you got, you know, kids at the house. You got the husband you're trying to marry. You got the dog. You got chronic back pain. You got chronic fatigue. You trying to take care of your mom and take care of your brother over here. You didn't send so-and-so $500. You waiting for her to get, get your money back. We don't know your life. I don't know your life, you know, and so I want us to be. So I just I just want us to be 
real about some of the things that's going on and like I'm just it hurts my heart to see artists going through some of the things that that we going through that I've been going through as well but I've been processing a lot of the things some of it publicly but a lot of it on my own and a lot in my real life and in my real relationships and with my collectors and patrons and like literally it hasn't even just reminded me I'm going through a little bit of a transition. More on that later on the main channel. But my patrons know what's going on and I sent out an email to my patrons. I was like, hey y'all, I'm doing like a spring cleaning. I have some originals available. I sold two paintings in two days and made over $4,000 from my patrons alone from two people that I emailed. So it's also about getting back to that one-on-one. -on -one. That's it. I, I literally followed up with the Dear Collector. Shout out to Amelia, okay? She, she probably now watching this because this is a whole, it's a whole different audience. But shout out to Amelia anyway, okay, to my to my collectors. But I, I followed up with her. I was like, hey, Amelia. <laughs> Hey, just like check it in, like just following up, you know, and I know as artists for me, I'm speaking to myself, like I'm guilty. I'm, I'm putting my hand up. It's real comfortable and cozy for us to talk to artists. It's, it's kind of, we kind of like preaching in the choir. Like we love being in the churches, talking to other people who like us, who got the same values as us, who got the same thing going on. But it can be hard, it can be hard and scary going out into the world and asking somebody, will you buy this? Will, will you buy this? But that's the actual real work is having those conversations with actual customers. And it's uncomfortable. I get it. Like we don't like to sell. We, we, we don't want to ask. But that's what it takes to be a professional artist. And I think it's about getting real clear. If you're not willing to do that, bow out now. And there's also no shame in that. There's no shame in pivoting. There's no shame in clarity. And there's no shame in being true to who you truly are. That like that it that is what it is. Just because you love art and, and 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 you love creating, that does not mean you need to make it a professional job. It doesn't. It doesn't because this is actually one of the hardest things that I have ever done. And I went to nursing school. Okay, <laughs> I have a bachelor's of science in nursing. Okay, I passed the NCLEX first try. <laughs> she passed the NCLEX. Okay. And that ain't got nothing on what it is being an artist and showing up with courage every single day and experiencing rejection every single day. But I get stronger every single day. So it's like if you if you ain't ready, bow out now, bow out now. And this is the last thing that I'm gonna say. Okay, this this is this this is the first and the last thing I'm gonna say. And to and this is an honest conversation for my community of people who've been watching the Gemini Diaries for a while. First of all, thank you. For new people who just stumbling, stumbling across this video and like, who the hell is this girl? Hey, welcome. I'm Aramis Hammer. I'm a full-time artist working in Seattle, Washington. I have been pursuing my art. Well, actually, I've been sharing my art professionally and publicly with the world for the past 10 years. I've been a full-time artist for the past seven. Before that, I was a registered nurse. And so a lot of my background before art is health, wellness. So that's something that I'm super passionate about. And that, that's another talk about the issues that I have with people giving like medical advice, weight loss advice advice, diet advice. Our bodies are so different, but whatever. Okay. But the same way your body is so different, your art is so different. You are so unique. It's getting dark. Okay. <laughs> I've probably, I'm moving stuff around. I've even, I like looked back at some stuff. I'm gonna probably move some stuff around to sort of maybe make it a little bit more cohesive. This sort of last little bit that I said was towards the end, but I think I'm gonna chop that up and put it towards the front. But what I was saying is that this is kind of, this might be like the last sort of Gemini Diary episode that I'm doing. Part of it is that I'm setting healthy boundaries with the internet. Um, and that's not really the main thing. The main thing is y'all taking the time. I'm just getting real clear about my energy allocation, about where I'm spending my time, where I'm spending my energy, and I really am rededicating myself back to my craft and my practice. And so for me to even be taking time to edit videos on another second channel and to sort of even, part of the other thing is that I don't even be wanting to, some of the stuff before was just more like a word vomit, a rant, me processing my own things, which I do anyway. And so 
a lot of it, I was just like sharing it with the internet, but I've been doing that for years on my own of just like recording myself, voice notes. That's a lot of the way that I process things as well as journaling. And so I've just been going back to how I've been doing it, which is just like recording vo voice notes privately on my phone. It doesn't have to be uploaded for the, for the internet. Now I get it, some of it can be helpful for people, but I think the other thing that I'm realizing that I'm seeing like some of the topics that I be want to talk about, I'll see them online and I'm like, perfect, perfect, like perfect. Like it actually, it actually frees me from having to talk about that thing, you know, and not feeling like, oh, well, like, let me also talk about that too. It's like, no, she said it, it was great. I don't want to discourage anybody who maybe does want to talk about things that somebody has already talked about, because I think it is great to hear different perspectives. But what I'm just realizing is that Sometimes I want to say things because I think it's so important that they are said. Like at the end of the day, though, it doesn't have to be me that says it. Like I'm just like, as long as it's out there and as long as it's being said and as long as it's talked about, then great, you know. And I feel like this particular topic, I didn't really see much on the Internet about it. Um, specifically talking to artists and about being careful about where they are getting advice from. Um, and so I was like, okay, cool. This is something that I feel comfortable talking about. But one of the things that I really am passionate about is affirmations. My entire, I listen to affirmations every single day, every single day and multiple times a day. And it has truly reframed my mind, reshaped the way that I see myself, the way that I see others, the, see, the way that I interact with my work, the way I interact with the world. Like affirmation has truly changed my life and I love affirmation so much. Y'all know I say on the main channel, Louise Hay is my bae. I listen to Louise Hay every single morning. I kid you not when I say, <laughs> when I say I listen to her every single morning and it's really been inspiring me because I have a creative affirmations video on my main channel and that video has been doing really well and some of the comment people are like I like I love this I listen to this every day and I'm just like oh if y'all love affirmations I can totally make more affirmations and I really feel like that's where I can really serve artists even more is just from my voice. Like actually I do love speaking. I feel like I have heard that I do have a nice voice and I like listening to affirmations. I even listen to my own affirmations. And so I wanna share more of love and light in the world and not more of the sort of like processing my own mess and muck or like, cause part of it, sometimes I, I don't even wanna hear myself like in that way, you know, I'm like, girl, I need you to be in a different energy. It's like, I don't even wanna go back and edit stuff where I'm complaining or or in a sort of like low energy, you know? I'm really being conscious about where I'm putting my energy, where I'm putting my focus. And I get it, sometimes it is, you know, relatable or helpful for somebody if you hearing somebody going through some of the same thing for you. But from my own personal experience, I love being in a, in a higher vibration. And, and, and if I do need to get something out and just rant with something, that's just something I can just share on my voice note. And cool, I've processed that, I've released it, I let it go. I don't even want it to be in the in the sort of algorithm of continuing that energy because everything is energy and like and it's real you know it's real I think about the and this is such a side right like if you still here and like you still like I'm I'm hoping you created something magical or doing some major deep cleaning on the house okay because I feel like this is gonna be a long talk and I also feel like this is a moment when I can really talk to the viewers of my channel where I can really talk to the people who've been joining me over here on a Gemini diary um, but yeah, like I, some of the energy, some of the conversations, I don't even want to entertain for myself. What I want to entertain is conversations around abundance, growth and expansion and my deep internal worth, you know, and it's like I don't even want to give power to my self-doubt. I don't want to give power to my disbelief, to my fear, to any to any of the things. I just want to be on the side of the world where I am just reminding you of your internal and inherent value and self-worth of being an artist and a creator and a light bringer to the world. And so I feel like if people need more creative affirmations, like I, I can give that. <laughs> I can totally give that. So if you do see following on the channel that if there's an affirmation, creative affirmation video that come or some sort of affirmations in general, um, I feel like this will be the perfect place to do it. This channel is already connected to Spotify as well. So it's like you can listen to the affirmations on Spotify and you don't have to listen to any ads if you are uh, if you don't have YouTube premium because. <laughs> YouTube premium is amazing. I feel, I feel like it will it will change your life if you're able to do it. I highly recommend doing it. 
yeah, like whenever I'm in like somebody's account who has ads, I just be like, ooh, like is this, is this what people are experiencing? Especially during a meditation or an affirmation, but that's a whole nother conversation. But I hope this has served you in some way. And I just really wanna like, at this point, I'm just getting tired on oh, no, them. I'm just like slowly keeping my eyes closed for longer and longer. <laughs> I'm just tired at this point, but like, yeah, I just want to continue to remind you how important you are on this planet and how whatever goals you have for your life, they are valid and they are worthy of being seen. And if it is not being professional with being a professional artist, and if it's just like doing your watercolors in your living room, painting with your kids, creating little crafts with your friends and the families, that is so beautiful and that's so wonderful. And that's still important and valuable as well. And to find something that serves you and serves your lifestyle for the season that you are in in your life. Nobody else's. Not not mine, not him, not her, not them or they, not anybody else on the internet. I hope you honor the person that is within you. All right. I'm sending y'all all my love and all my light. Okay. We'll talk soon. Peace out.